Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, if you've just tuned in, well, a very good morning to you. I'm Mpo Sitole. We are at the couch area for the sit-down with Acting Health Minister Mamoloko Kubai Ngubani, who's been holding the Cabinet Portfolio of Tourism Minister since May of 2019. Now, this month, she assumed her other role as Acting Health Minister following the special leave taken by Dr. Zwelin Kize. Kubai Ngubani becomes the Acting Health Minister at a time when the country battles the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. With this new role, she's also ha received some public resistance with questions over why she's placed in the health portfolio when she is not a medical doctor. She joins us now to tell us about her journey so far and how she thinks she will reach her objectives in this role. Uh, uh, very good morning to you, Minister uh, Gubay Ngubane. Thank you so much for your time. Your timing as acting health minister right at the beginning of a third wave and a potential fourth wave you have been out and about answering questions giving clarity on a number of, of issues and concerns when it comes to COVID-19 and the vaccination uh, drive talk to us about uh, how much of this work has I mean how much of an impact all this work has had on you personally um, as a person who's dealing with two very important roles in the country. Good morning, Park. Good morning to your viewers. Um, I think mainly one of the things uh, perhaps that has assisted me is because I've always had a lot of things to do. Um, one, um, my time as Minister of Tourism has been quite hectic, but on the sideline I was studying um, my PhD. So what this has done with the acting role, I've suspended my studies for now um, and put them aside. So the time I used to study in terms of uh, my PhD is now also committed to supporting the work that I have to do or providing the leadership I have to provide in, in the portfolio of, of health. So you do find time, you blend. Um, I think one of the things, um, Many people who know me, I'm quite an organized person, so I like to have systems. So I put system in terms of how I operate, the time for reading at night, set that aside, time for my children. So there's, there's that organization and literally, um, and as well, people who are supportive um, with the team that I work with in the offices, the team that I've been with since I've been a minister. So they understand my routine, they understand how I want things to be done. So they are also assisting me to sort of get the team at health in the ministry to be able to fit into how I operate and, and make me quite effective. And what have you made of the criticism that you've received, Minister, with uh, many saying that uh, you are not qualified to be in the acting portfolio as health minister? I think that has started to die down because one is it's the issue that um, if I may say I don't think it's personally more uh -huh. um, over time as government because of sometimes people feel that we've not taken the right decisions um, the the trust between us and the public has gone down so there is a trust deficit in the public and that's what has led to many people when we take decisions as government, um, they would question those decisions. So I do um, take it in that context. Um, I've never taken it personally. Um, I must say, when I went to be a Minister of Science and Technology, similar almost not, not to that extent or scale, criticism, and almost similar people. I mean, I saw Professor Johnson and John, um, Professor Johnson article here the same when I was in, in science and technology as a comment. Um, so you do sort of tend to, to say, let my work speak for me. Um, and that's what what's my attitude towards that is. Um, I'm here to do the work. There's a reason why President asked me specifically um, to do the work. And for that, I need to continue to be who I am and doing what colleagues in cabinet and the president knows me to do. And, uh, you know, why, why do you think that uh, the president had this amount of trust uh, in you to carry out such a critical role, especially at this time? I mean, the timing 
we, we're moving into a third wave. You've been working really hard to reassure us all in South Africa. Look, I'm not so sure, um, more, but I think um, one of the things that um, I can say, I do pay attention to detail, I read a lot. Um, so, and because maybe even with the experience of having moved portfolios, mm -hmm. it could say that I've learned how to move into portfolio and know where to touch so that you can make the immediate impact. Um, I think those things come quite handy from a person. I, I can't answer for the president, yes. but I can answer for myself to say where I am. Um, with having moved portfolios, it sort of gave me an exposure and experience of different portfolios. Um, so when I move to a new portfolio, I know exactly which questions to ask at what point, what to look for, and how to prioritize in terms of immediate things to be done and long term to be done. My focus as I went to, and, and you'd have noted, some people felt a bit uncomfortable. One of the things I don't do is that when I get into a portfolio is to start speaking publicly without having meetings with the critical stakeholders. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did immediately after the president announced that he's asking me to act and talk to me, I immediately started touching base first with the minister, Minister Mkise, Deputy Minister, the DG, then went into starting meeting with everybody else including the MAC, meet and greet, and all those things in touch and go, in understanding what are the issues, getting some briefing, what are the immediate uh, things to be done. What has been fortunate is that I am a member of the NCCC. I'm a member of the regulation IMC. Though I've not been a member of the IMC that deals with um, vaccine, but quite a number of things that had to deal with COVID-19 have been part of since the beginning last year, March. Being a minister of a sector that has been hard hit, one had to learn a lot about the pandemic. One had to learn a lot about how the dynamics happen, what interventions needs to be done, and how to support it. And that comes quite handy for me in terms of this role of acting minister of health, because it assists me to be able to pay. I don't bring only the health uh, eye. Mm -hmm. I bring the eye of the economic cluster having been, or being a chair of the economic cluster, knowing the impact of certain decisions that we take, how they come to that side, so it helps. Um, the issue of having been on the ground in terms of, as, as an activist, um, you are able to look, sort of touch base in terms of what feedback, where should we get it in terms of your impact was. The vaccine rollout, for example, mm -hmm. it's on the ground in the community. So feedback from the food soldiers who are involved with the vaccine rollout, it's very critical so that when you do decisions, you know that you've been able to at least touch base with those. You might not be able to talk to everybody, but to a certain extent, have a sense of the issues that are critical that are big. And being able to know how to pick those issues, where to go to be able to find that is also very critical as you execute your responsibilities. Absolutely. Uh, and Minister, you haven't minced your words, especially listening to you yesterday when it comes to Gauteng's battle plan essentially for COVID-19. You've announced the intervention of the military. How is this process going to unfold and when can we expect to feel uh, and see the presence of the army? Um, the process yesterday, they were finalizing the deployment as I got the report. That's uh, it. We've left it to the operational uh, team to assist us in terms of that the DG together with the acting HOD in Gauteng and um, the head of the military health team, they've been working to ensure that the deployment. The areas where you are going to see them, it's going to be in the hospitals. So it's not the soldiers like in, in where they do in compliance monitoring. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. This one, is, that's what I'm saying specifically, health military. They will be in the hospitals. They will assist us in the testing sites to increase the capacity. They will assist us with the contact tracing, capacitated and breaking up. Remember when one of the things that we've learned out of um, the first and the second wing was that if you don't respond with the capacity human capital, your human resources, like your nurses, your doctors, get fatigued. So it's very important to ensure that you bring in capacity so that when you deal with the numbers, you don't end up with the nurses themselves being fatigued, but also sometimes you end up with them being uh, testing positive and having to go isolation and all those things. So that's one of the things that we are making sure that 
the capacity to be able to fight the pandemic, especially in Kauteng is there. But the other element of it in the conversation we had with the province is also for them to emphasize and reinforce the enforcement, the law enforcement part of it, compliance with the regulation. If we are to do all these things with South Africans, especially in Kauteng, responding with them, stopping the protests, uh, stopping the gatherings, um, wearing their masks, social distancing, whether they're going to the malls, they're going where it's weekend, not doing illegal activities or even illegal gatherings, um, that would assist us. We should be able to see the impact and the results at least in two weeks. Very well. Minister, I'm going to ask you to stay put for us as uh, we return shortly after this in discussion on the sit-down with Acting Health Minister Mamuloko Gubane talking all things health and, of course, uh, some, some of the controversies and uh, the comments of some critics when it comes to her role and, and potential and abilities. That conversation continuing shortly after this. Stay tuned. And uh, thanks for staying with us on your weekend report. We're still in conversation with Minister Mamuloko Kubai Ngubane, Acting Health Minister, who has uh, taken on the role at a really uh, a time when the country's battling the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister, we were speaking a little bit about COVID-19, and you also mentioned that uh, at this point in time, when it comes to Gauteng, transmission of the virus is outstripping the department's ability to detect it, especially in Gauteng. I mean, you've spoken to elements of uh, avoiding gatherings and, and large protests. But uh, one um, aspect of COVID-19 and the spread of COVID-19, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa mentioning that uh, the youth uh, um, really need to be um, the group that is closely monitored when it comes to ensuring that the numbers are indeed curbed. Is there sort of a, a strategy that you, you have in mind when it comes to addressing young people in helping in the fight against COVID-19? Yes, um, one of the things that we are now reviewing in terms of um, looking at the vaccine rollout is to see how we can bring young people to assist us with the registration. Uh, the president has a program of young um, youth must uh, employment program. We're looking at that with our partners. We will be engaging several of our partners to come on board to assist us. One of the things is to say, because when you look at the registration, we are using an electronic system. So what we are picking up is that many of our, for example, now when I looked at why the number of um, the 60 plus population is not at the level where it's satisfactory in terms of registration. And one of the issues that we are seeing is the barriers because of the technology. It's important for us to have this information on the system, on the EDDS because the whole process needs to be very uh, credible. We must have records, but also because they have medical information of individuals. So within the system, we can protect the information as well. So we do not encourage the manual way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And what we are picking up with some of the health areas and health community health care workers have been registering manually, and we are trying to close that gap. And one of the ways that we're going to do it is to bring young people who go into the communities register with the gadgets and be able to assist us to ensure that the information is in the system where we will be able to make decisions easily and it can, can be available to us timelessly without the manual part of it. And these young people will be engaged for a particular time, will announce when the time is right in the coming week. Uh, we're hoping that we should have these details finalized and we can get into the details. So in that conversation the president had with the nation, he said with me to say, bring in young people uh, who can help you in the areas where you are competing. And very lastly, Minister, I mean, earlier on you were speaking about how you've managed to, to balance uh, two roles and your excellent time management as well as being an organized leader. And, um, you know, it, it brings me to, to ask you the question about uh, what the DA has raised and something that has also been in the public's eye uh, as, as the, the DA has lambasted you for spending 150,000 rand in a cook-off with media personality Somizi. What is your response to that? Because this is also a matter that has sparked some sort of outrage amongst others, asking why so much money and what was it all about? Yeah, I think what we have decided to do, um, I had a discussion with my portfolio committee chair. We are going to avail all the documentation. What I can assure firstly, 
because initially it was an issue as if there's corruption and all that. I can assure the nation there's not been mismanagement um, of money. Uh, there's not been corruption in that. Um, I'm one of the leaders that really stand and, and speak. I don't speak right and go left. Yeah. Um, I think I must be clear on that. That's the first thing. Secondly, it's unfortunate that the whole thing turned out in the manner that it did. As Department of Tourism, one of our responsibilities is marketing. Um, marketing in terms of ensuring that we promote tourism across. As I arrived into the portfolio, one of the things that many people had raised was that township and rural tourism has taken a back step to get back seat together with transformation. And one of the things that we needed to do is to focus on how to promote uh, township tourism. Now, we've moved from one township to the other. On the, on the 21st of March, during a, 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 what is it, Human Rights Day, I was in Soweto in Vilagasi Street. We had various people there, we had invited, and we were kickstarting that to say we want people to come to Vilagasi. And the same approach we have done, we've gone to other communities, I've been to them, for all provinces into communities. The first thing that I got as a criticism was that we didn't invite the businesses in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. We've never done that in any of our activities. We don't issue invites to personal businesses. What we do, we issue a poster that we use to popularize the event. And what we have seen over time since I've been the minister is that the poster becomes a communique that invites everybody to come. So there's no special invites to anyone. That's the first thing. Secondly, Somizi is not the first celebrity we work with in the Department of Tourism. Um, you'd note last year during um, September, we also did an event with Black Coffee. We've published it. Um, we've done a lot. One of the things that has been on my to-do is to develop a pink route in South Africa. South Africa is one of the countries that is friendly for queer community. On the day we did the cook-off, I don't know if you knew, it was International Day of Queer Community. Uh -huh. And I specifically said, that's the reason I was happy the team brought Somizi to come and do this, because he's one of the people that is open about being gay. And we felt that doing something, responding twice, in terms of being in a township, but also as a department and a portfolio that could assist and we could benefit in terms of promoting, getting information from the community on how on the path of grow, of developing a pink route is important. So the cook-off, yes, um, I think it sparked a lot of uh, criticism. We take that, we are learning out of that, but I think some of the criticism of people wanting personal invites are just uncalled for, unfortunately. How would I manage anything if I have to, every time going somewhere, write personal invites to people? It's not going to work, it has never happened. Um, so that's the first thing. And I've always said, we do have platforms where we engage, for example, Sato Vito, we've been engaging with them. And I felt that if that community felt that they have suggestions. For example, an accusation of saying that um, they've sent invites. We have records, my PA has been interacting with them. The dates were shifted for particular reasons, not that we never agreed uh, in terms of activities. We were meant now before the third wave to be in Ekuruleni for a youth event. We have postponed it in tourism because we can't have it in the magnitude that initially we wanted to, so we had to postpone it. Now, I hope tomorrow they don't come back and say, we had an engagement with the minister in council, she never came. So we are operating in an environment of the pandemic where sometimes plans have to be altered so that we respond and we are seen responsible as leaders. So the other issue that came publicly was the issue around where um, something about almost like we are contradictory with Somizi, what he said. We got an invite, invoice, a, a invoice of one, in terms of the venue, 
with everything that is packaged. And I think the team will go into it. I always avoid to get into procurement issues mm -hmm. because I don't get involved. And that's why when one of the stations wanted an interview, they did with a person who's responsible instead of the uh, corporate services, who could explain in detail in terms of their system, how they work, because I don't get involved with, as a minister. PFMA is very clear. Ministers don't get involved in the, in the procurement. But with this, we have agreed that we'll send all the details to the chairperson of the committee in terms of the invoice we received and what has been paid. And what I have issued as a response to the question to parliament, I stand by it. And because that has been signed off by the director general of the department, having checked the information and provided me with saying from the CFO, the procurement, this is how it happened. This is how much we paid and it was sent through to parliament. Very well. Thanks for setting the record straight. And uh, very lastly, are you not concerned at all, Minister, that uh, perhaps your uh, portfolio in tourism may suffer because of the amount of work that you need to do in your acting capacity as health minister? I do have some level of concerns um, in that. I've asked the team to assist me to ensure that they, we balance. Yesterday I had, uh, for example, I did the media briefing in the morning on, on health. Immediately after what I was in tourism doing a SADC meeting. So daily we're trying our best to ensure that there's a balance and uh, the issues of tourism do not take a back seat. Um, so that at least I'm comfortable for now. We'll be engaging with TBCSA. I'll get feedback next week whether they do feel some concerns and then we'll take it back up. So far I've not received any feedback that says we've put it on the side. I'll do my best to balance and ensure that both the portfolios re receive my most attention. Very well. Thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, setting the record straight there, Acting Health Minister Mamuloko Kubai Ngubane in conversation with us here on the weekend report with a sit down, giving us uh, some clarity on a number of aspects as well as uh, controversies that have raised a few eyebrows. Thank you for your time, Minister. Still to come. In the final stretch of the show, we bring you the very latest from the Netflix world and check out what's uh, coming up in a few minutes from now in your newsfeed AM edition. That and more in a short while. Stay tuned.